it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to check back with you and give you an update on some products that I've recently purchased. What's working, what hasn't, and what would I recommend to you? And I think a lot of this is, I try and do first impressions because I feel like the first time you try something, sometimes it's so different. It's like, whoa, not what I was expecting. And that's a helpful reaction. But what it comes down to is what do you use? What do you reach for? What is really good? Some of these have been mentioned in a monthly favorites, but we're gonna go over it anyway. All right, so I have purchased a few things from the drugstore. I'll start off with lips. I got this pencil. I have a love affair, where is it? With the Lipstick Queen Medieval Lipstick. This is my favorite sheer red. It's recently talked about in my favorite red lipsticks, most used reds. And so when I saw they had a coordinating lip liner, I was like, yes. But the truth is, this is more of a, pinky red and it, I don't know it, it, there you go it looks a little more pink that way the truth is I don't think it looks good with medieval the way I like to wear medieval the reason I love this lipstick is because it is like super sheer it's like it's right here it's like a baby hint of a red and this is like boom you can't really get that soft look with this and so I wouldn't wear them together um, you can build the lipstick up so it's a little bit more intense, but it never gets to this level. So this is, an, the, the formula is fine. The lipstick is fine. I love that it has like this little sharpener in the end here for these retractable ones. That's great. But the truth is, I don't think I'm going to use it in conjunction with this. And I'm not as excited about this as about my long-term love. This gloss from Maybelline, this is their Lifter Gloss. I have the shade Reef. This is a pretty shade. The first time I used it, I used it in a drugstore, kind of get ready with me, and I used it with this lip liner, and I ended up taking it off because I didn't really like the way they comboed together with the eye look. I find that if I get too much of this, like, on the outside corners, I do get that string. It's not, it's not a sticky gloss as I'm going over it like this. I'm like, no, it's not. It does have a little stick to it because it's most glosses do, but it doesn't have a really heavy or thick feel to it. The, the thing that I get with this is if I over apply and I always over apply gloss, I want my lips shiny and juicy and delicious. And the truth is this one does collect in the corners and that's one of my least favorite things about it. So this is one where I will put it on. I will make sure to put my finger in my mouth and pull it out so I don't get like the crusty around the inside, and then I'll go and just wipe this off habitually. But I don't like that I have to be that high maintenance about it. It's great, it's pretty, I like other glosses better. And the Fenty one is good. I also really like this one from Alamar. This is their birthday suit, and I really, really love Cherry Blossom from Wayne Goss. Those are the ones I use the most, or like right here. I've been wanting to love it as much as these guys, and I just don't. I made a Sydney Grace purchase in July and I forgot to, when I was doing my last updates, uh, share this with you. This is their lip cream in the shade Bailey. This is another one that I want to wear more because I like the formula. It's a much cooler toned gloss, but it's, it's opaque. It's like crazy opaque. And if your lips are at all dry or flaky, you don't want to put this on because it just kind of catches in all those little craggly spots. So exfoliate and then put this on. Um, but I have been warming this up because although this is a really pretty color, it's usually a little cooler than I like on my lips. Um, so I've been using it a lot with the Wayne Goss Mauve Lip Pencil. Those two work really well. Sometimes I'll do this and I'll throw on a little bit of um, this bit of honey from NYX, their Butter Gloss. I really like this shade too. Um, or I'll just throw them on, even oddly enough, I did the other day where it, um, in conjunction with this, this is, um, you wouldn't think they would go, but together they make a really beautiful cool lip, but not too cool because I feel like the berry in this really helps. This is from L'Oreal. It's their Color Riche Plump and Shine Wild Fig Plump. I really like this lipstick. It's been a huge favorite of mine since lockdown hit, but this is okay. I don't use it as much as I want to because I have to kind of make a concoction with it every time because I don't usually just wear it straight. I picked up this little guy here. This is from Revlon. This is their Colorstay Micro Hyper Precision Gel Liner. This has impressed me. Now, I got this on a recommendation from Jessica Braun. <laughs> it's like way too many lines. The one thing I will tell you is you can see there's like a little, the little tip of it fell off. That happens a lot. 
I don't know that that happens with the hourglass one that I have. I have a 1.5 millimeter from hourglass. Um, and every time I reach for it and use it, it the end doesn't snap off. So you kind of have to be careful with this. But if you make one line, it's very skinny. I like this above the lash line. I normally wear eyeliner in my upper waterline and I usually use a really dark color because my goal is to make my lashes look longer and thicker at the base and that's what I do. But what I don't want is it to transfer to my lower waterline. This does transfer. So I don't use it there, but because it is so skinny, I can get it right where I want on my, like within the lashes and right along the lash line without it getting too thick. Because if you're looking at the difference, like this guy here from Milk is another one of my favorites. But if you look at the size of these liners, they're completely different. This is really chunky. It's great for my waterline because it stays pretty good there. But this, I don't feel like I'm losing any real estate above my lash line on my lid when I'm using this, and that's what I want. And that's one of the reasons I don't really wear a lot of liner above the lash line because I feel like it takes up eyeshadow real estate and I don't have a really big lid. But this has been great. That product actually changes the way I wear a liner because I didn't used to wear it above my lash line that much, and now that's kind of making me go, oh, I can do that. In a recent Sephora haul, I picked up this Miraculous Beauty. This is the brow pen from ABH. And you can make the most beautiful, teeny tiny, brow-like hair marks here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn through this. I wear this on days when I'm not wearing any makeup, like not even lip stuff. I have a mask on and I draw my brows in because for me, I have more heavy duty brows here. And then this last little from the arch out, it's kind of like, there's four hairs. We're on the rest, we're on vacation, goodbye. So I can, I feel like I can, and since we're wearing masks, I leave the house and I've got, you know, a nice strong brow, not too much. The other thing that's great about this is you can take a spoolie, if you get too much in one area, you can kind of brush it out. And it doesn't disturb the rest of the, what you leave there to the point where it doesn't have longevity for the rest of the day. So I feel like this is a great product. It's a pen and it marks it lasts all day and if you get too much in one area you can spoolie it out which is I think oh there's a fly in here goodbye <laughs> which is brilliant about like your traditional brow pencils and I feel like this has the best of both worlds and this shade medium brown is perfect for me it's the same shade that I use in my um, Anastasia Beverly Hills brow is I, I love this this is my new favorite product not just brow product but like my new favorite it, this impressed me so much i've been blown away by it love this so when i picked up this from makeup forever it's the matte velvet skin blurring powder i liked it i made the mistake of using it with the little guy here i saw so many people when this came out last year like oh it does it really they were in their 20s young perfect skin heavily applied with a sponge underneath the eyes did me no favors i also feel like this shade here this is y215 it's the second to lightest shade they have an r210 um, but that one is red based and it's it would be it would look pink on my skin it's i've swatched them in store before and i know this is the closest shade to me this is still even just a hair too dark but you can really tell when you use it and you swipe it on at this level i don't know if you can tell but it's it's right here it's a little bit darker and more peachy than the rest of my skin it's close enough that when I use it with a brush, like I did for today's makeup, I get so much better. Like it gives me that matte feeling. It does kind of uh, blur the look of, and I'm always looking at my pores across my nose and like right in through here. I feel like I have a reduced orange peel type texture. It stays all day. It's a really nice powder. I don't know that it's like $40 great. I think there are other ones that I like better, but am I mad at this? No. This surprised me. I was I was sure when I ordered, I ordered shade two. I didn't. I have shade one, fair pale. And I was like, oh no, because I heard so many people saying, this was too light, it didn't show up. I'm wearing it today and it does show up on me, but this has the same consistency as the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. So the formula of this is amazing. The one thing that I noticed is that this is very similar in shade, not in tone, the tones are different, but it's light like Hula Light is from Benefit. Um, they're both really, really 
fair. This looks a little pinker in the box and this looks a little bit more yellow toned. It, it does also look like just a hair lighter, but if you swatch these, so if you're looking at them, this is the Charlotte Tilbury and this is the Benefit. So it is a little more yellow in tone and just a hair lighter, but not so much lighter that it doesn't work. I also love that you have a place in the back where there's a hole where you can actually push the whole pan out and replace it. So it's magnetic, it's a really strong magnet, it's not gonna fall out on its own, but the packaging is reusable. And I feel like that's great because it lowers the amount of waste. I do think I'm gonna continue reaching for this. I do really like this shade and I do feel like it was the right shade for me. At first I was like, I don't see it at all. I feel like I had been influenced by other people I'd been seeing using this but in real life, it looks great on me. During that same haul, I did also pick up the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in Apple Lime. It's a favorite. I think it's the third full size that I've purchased. I really like it. I've also gone through a ton of the minis. Love this. I'm usually not without it. All right, we're down now to just the drugstore. I did get a whole bunch of the L'Oreal Age Perfect. It was a mixed bag. I'll tell you, their brow pencil didn't work for me. It is too much like a pomade in a pencil, so it's like really, really thick and goopy. And I feel like when I was trying to go through and spoolie it through, it almost completely like vanished. So let's draw some more lines on here, see how dark it is, and then it's like, goodbye. <laughs> and I, I can spoolie my brows a lot, and with very little effort, it's like completely gone. So this didn't work for me. Um, I didn't like the formula of the pencil. I feel like it's got a great spoolie on it, but that's not what I'm looking for. Um, I feel like the powder that I got, I got a shade, the second lightest shade, and I have the shade 305 Cream Beige. It's too deep for me. I wonder if I would love this product more if I had the shade 300, um, but they didn't have it at my store, and this was sitting in the 300 slot, and. Like somebody who wasn't paying attention just grabbed it, I'm like, oh, it's the lightest one. And then I got home and I was like, wait, 305, wait. And then I looked up on them and I'm like, no, I'm like I'm using it anyway. And the truth is, I feel like the powder is nice for a drugstore powder. It feels nicely milled. I wish, um, I have been using like this little guy here and I, you can like, I don't know that I should do this, but hit the corners of your nose and like the top and it brings down the shine. I feel like it works pretty well for that, but I think I might like this powder better if it was in my shade. I don't know that this is, out of all the products there were, the thing that you need. This is not the one that impressed me the most. Something else that didn't work for me was their uh, eyebrow pencil. This is their Age pa Perfect Satin Glide Eyeliner. I wanted something, remember I told you before, I always look for something that goes in my waterline and won't transfer from my upper waterline to my lower because I want my lashes to look longer. This transferred. If you use this, it's right here, above your lash line, it stays really nicely. It's waterproof and smudge resistant. It doesn't say that it's smudge proof because <laughs> she budged. But uh, I feel like it was okay. Um, but I feel like there are other drugstore, where did you go? like this one from uh, Revlon. I like this one better than this one. And I feel like I'm getting a little bit more precision with this. So if we're talking about the things that I love and use the most, here we go. I have used this Age Perfect Radiant Serum Foundation a lot. SPF 50, I always wear my own dedicated SPF 50, but an extra layer is not a bad thing. Please don't expect this to give you all the coverage that you need. What I do really like about this is that it looks beautiful when you use a beauty sponge. I tried it for the first time with a makeup brush and I felt like it was sitting on top of my skin. So the next time I did it, I was pressing it in with a damp beauty sponge. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. My skin was glowing. Now this is definitely light to maybe light medium coverage. You're not gonna get a ton of coverage. Uh, I feel like my Char Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder is actually lighter coverage. It's what I'm wearing today, but this is not heavy at all. I love, I love the concealer with my whole heart. And for one reason alone, I use shade 200, um, it's just ivory. This concealer does not, I can put it on, I can blend it out, I can reach for a powder. And normally before I get my brush and the powder, I have to re-tap out because the concealer, every concealer I have, except for this 
this one, starts to separate in my crinkles. And then I set those little crinkly lines in it, which I don't want to do. But this, I can blend it in. I can take time and not, not a lot of time and get a brush in the powder and set it. And it doesn't, it hasn't collected in my little cavender's creases. This is beautiful. Now, this is also a medium weight. It's not super high coverage. It does build okay. The one thing I will tell you, the things that I love about this, it's radiant. It's hydrating. I don't end up looking dry under here. The other thing that I like, it doesn't budge, but on top of that, when I wear just concealer, like under my eyes, corners of my nose, hyperpigmentation spot and some spots on my chin, it blends beautifully into my skin and I look like I'm not really wearing a lot of makeup. Love that. This blush is beautiful. So this blush is very different. It, it is their uh, Radiant Satin Blush. I have the shade Rosewood. A lot of people feel like this shade is too light for them. And I could see that. I could see where this might be, but if you're fair, this is a beautiful blush. So I just swatched it for you right here. It's really soft. I like that it's, it looks like it can be a little pink, but it has just enough peach to it that it's not too cool. Sometimes blushes that are too cool, um, even if they're really soft, pink lead me very much into the clown cheeks territory. This is gorgeous. I love this. The other thing that I love about this, and I really noticed it the first time I wore it, I didn't put on any highlight. I wanted to see what this would look like because it does have a subtle, as you can see, a subtle sheen to it. This is beautiful. So if you don't want to wear a highlighter, but you want something that gives you just a little reflect, this is going to do it for you. And it lasted really well. It lasted well for eight hours. This has been the thing that I reach for a ton. Another thing that I can't stop wearing is this lipstick. This is Bright Mocha. This is there's two different types of lipsticks in the Age Perfect line. This is the one that has that hydrating core in the middle. I forget what it's called. They have another one that's just a straight cream lipstick. And uh, this one here is beautiful. She looks like that. It's not too much. It's just enough. And I wear this on days when I'm not wearing any other, well, where's my brow pen? I'll put the brow pen in and then I'll put this on. This has really been surprising. It talks about having nine hours of hydration. So when I am wearing it, even when the lipstick is gone, because it is kind of a sheer lipstick, and when it does wear down, my lips still feel hydrated. I don't understand that. Because um, I remember putting this on in the morning, reapplying after lunch, and by like nine o'clock at night, I was like, oh, my lips, I don't have anything on them. I should put the thing on them. And when I went to put the thing on them, I didn't have any dry, craggy, flaky spots. And my lips are really dry, so they tend to do that. This kept them hydrated. I, I don't know. I don't know. I like it. I do like it. I don't like L'Oreal Classic Packaging, where you have to line this little guy up here with a little notch. That's my least favorite thing. And also that it's kind of slanted down so you have to make sure it's going on. I prefer something that it doesn't matter which way I put it together, it's just gonna go on. So I don't like that I have to futz with this, but I know it's very much a L'Oreal thing and it's kind of cute when you look at it this way, but it's not easy applying. Sometimes I'm like, wait, how does the cap go on? And yes, I do sometimes struggle putting things back together, but there you go. Um, things that I've really loved, these guys here, the Charlotte Tilbury, mm, where's my brow pen? Oh, the best. And things that were not good for me. I think it was kind of like a mixed bag. Oh, I did not like this at all. I would heard such great reviews for this. I was hoping I was gonna like it a little bit better, but I feel like it's a little too high maintenance for me. I want something that's a little bit easier or I need to just learn to put on less gloss. Maybe it's user error. So let me know if you've tried stuff recently, what have you been loving? What has been working really well for you or that you bought and you were sure you're gonna use a lot and then you're like, I haven't really used it at all. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Thanks for being subscribed and I'll see you again soon. Bye.